Over 21 years past its original release date? Duke Nukem Forever's got nothing on this game. Riding a popular wave of interest in virtual reality, the original Star Fox was released in North America on February 21st, 1993 for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Developed by Argonaut Games, Star Fox was the first SNES title to utilize the Argonaut design as SuperFX graphics coprocessor to power the game's polygon-based graphics and showcase the ultimate potential of the SuperFX. Star Fox went on to sell 4 million copies, and the Super FX chip and its successor were used in a handful of other SNES games, so a sequel seemed a foregone conclusion. One was announced, and a playable demo was even available at the Winter CES in 1995, but shortly before the game's 1996 release, even though it was mostly complete, Star Fox 2 was cancelled. Reportedly, Nintendo feared the game would look dated compared to Sony's new PlayStation, and the Sega Saturn. Case in point, the 1995 port of id Software's Doom, also a Super FX title, was a tremendous achievement for the 16-bit console, but was technically inferior to ports on other consoles released the year prior in 1994, such as the Sega 32X version. Yeah, hurt me plenty. A more practical reason for the decision was this. The impending release of the Nintendo 64 console on September 29th, 1996. Hey, that's my birthday. And so, Star Fox 2 never saw the light of day. That is, until September 29th, 2017, in this little box. Hey, that's my birthday. The SNES Classic is a limited release collection of 20 built-in first and third-party SNES titles geared for today's HGTV gaming era. But why am I explaining this to you when it didn't even come out that long ago? Because... Everything becomes retro. Eventually. Mm-hmm. What you doing though? The SNES Classic Edition's main killer app is its 21st bonus game, Star Fox 2. So if nothing else, you'll be paying $80 for the first official release of this previously mothballed title. But it also represents the first time that Nintendo has been able to clear the technical and legal hurdles to release a Super FX title in a virtual format. As if to remind you of that fact, the SNES Classic Edition forces you to play the first level of the original Star Fox before unlocking the game that is probably the entire reason you bought this collection in the first place. Because, let's be honest, I already own the original cartridge versions of most of these games. And the ones I don't, I have on Wii and Wii U Virtual Console. Even Earthbound! Man, I need to finish that game. So why make people go through these hoops? No pun intended. To hype up the nostalgia? Or possibly to help tear off the rose-colored glasses about how cool this game actually was when we first experienced it 25 years ago? For me, I don't think anyone who understands what Star Fox 2 is and its place in gaming history has any illusions about what they're getting into. And yet, I spent most of the first few minutes of this review explaining that context to you. So you're welcome? Okay, on to the game. Star Fox 2 takes place soon after the events of Star Fox 1. Andros is returned inexplicably from certain doom. I mean, he promised he would. But this time he's backed up by the evil, opportunistic Star Wolf team. Andros has launched a multi-pronged attack on the Lilat system and the Star Fox team has been asked to assist the Cornelia military to repel the invasion. Unmanned missiles and warships are all on an intercept course toward Corneria. When the Star Fox team moves, they move too, essentially in real time. And if a Star Wolf vessel is in your path, they're smart enough to cut off your access to the bigger threats. Compared to the rail shooter that is the first game, Star Fox 2 presents exclusively full 3D space and land-based environments that the player can choose to play in any order. While there's no one correct path to victory, that victory does mean allowing some of Corneria's forces to fall while you triage which threats are the most important to take out. This puts the player in the position of thinking strategically even before the first sortie. 
Do you leave a group of missiles to Corneria's planetary defenses while you attack a base? Or do you take them out yourself? What about the incoming warships with their cannons that can devastate the surface of a planet? Or Andross's various bases in the Lilat system that are firing off more missiles? Or that weird pet space snake thing from the game's intro? What about Star Wolf? The Star Fox team has expanded to include new characters, Miyu and Faye, who had never appeared in any subsequent Star Fox game, and also new spaceship configurations. However, you can only choose two ships to directly control the defense of the Lilat system. And if one of your teammates goes down, they go down for good. God damn it, Slippy! At least I won't have to hear him whine anymore. Your special attacks and abilities are unique to your chosen vessel. They need to be charged up, so use them wisely. You also have an energy gauge, which doesn't recharge between battles. But you can collect power-ups as you fight. Argonaut throws the player right into the thick of it. In Star Fox 2, resources are scarce, and there's no time to waste. What a cool way to start a game, I thought to myself the first time I played. Except this isn't how Star Fox 2 starts. This is the whole game. What? Once you find a control scheme that works best for you, and you fully understand the mechanics of what you're doing, the game becomes fast and frenzied. Individual levels are short, much shorter than you would expect from the original game. By the time you get to the end and defeat Andros, again, you're presented with a scorecard of your performance. A D? Man, I didn't know there was going to be a test! Can't just be graded on a curve? Preferably a geodesic, or in space after all. At first, you might think that the game feels short because it's potentially unfinished, but it's intended to be played multiple times. Preserve your energy and weapons, improve your overall score, find better paths to stop Andros's armada with less lives lost. Fewer. And lessen the amount of damage to Corneria. This isn't a rail shooter, this is a siege simulator. Like that tower defense minigame in Final Fantasy VII, or, My Life as a Dark Lord, the sequel to the Final Fantasy offshoot, My Life as a King. Importantly, both games with Nintendo roots. It's not about getting to the end because, well, it's not a foregone conclusion, but it's not that hard. It's a game about maximizing performance. So if you're into that kind of thing, you're going to love Star Fox 2. However, noticeably absent is, well, the rest of your team. It's not just that they're less chatty, it's that they're absent entirely, despite expanding the roster by two. No wingman, no home base, just you against countless hordes. I mean, I know they say space is big, but where is everyone? The only time you encounter anyone else on the Star Fox team is if one continues from where you left off. So if you're expecting more Star Fox 1, just with some variations, you might want to play a Star Fox 64 instead. Ooh, it has a rumble. Be still, my beating heart. Uh, anyway, we'll come back to this later. Speaking of finding the right control scheme, I had problems with the defaults. When I switched to B control, I did much better. In space, the control pad is used for up, down, left, and right, but also forward, backward, or strafing when in walker mode on planet side levels, which I don't care what you say. This is the only way to play Goldeneye. Both shoulder buttons are then free to perform barrel rolls in space zones, but planet side are actually used to turn left or right. This wasn't obvious at first, but once I realized that the control scheme felt natural. The ability to transform between an R wing and a walker at the touch of a button tickles my transformer sensibilities. These scenes in Star Fox 2 are the most fun for me personally, and the most original mechanically. Unfortunately, first person mode is your only option when playing in space. What's that? Oh, the change to external is hidden in the start menu? Is view 2? Oh, that's just... <sighs> anyway. And that way, there's not a lot of difference the Super FX chip is making here, compared to older games that feature space battles. Except the enemies are rendered as polygons instead of sprites, and can be viewed from any angle, although most of the time they're too small and far away to see. But, even in 2018, not much about these kinds of games has changed. Man, for a game that was never released, there is a lot about Star Fox 2 that seems super familiar. Nintendo's internally developed Star Fox 64, released in April 1997, less than a year after Star Fox 2's original date, took many ideas from Star Fox 2, such as the inclusion of the villainous Star Wolf team, 
all range mode taking place of fully 3D environments, alternate vehicle modes minus the transformations, but no walker vehicles. Rats. And a multiplayer mode that was originally developed for Star Fox 2 early on before it was ultimately removed, were all developed by Nintendo's entertainment analysis and development team without their former Argonaut Games partner. Sorry, guys, I gotta sit this one out. The decision to double down on the original Star Fox game and story, but pepper it with ideas from Star Fox 2, <laughs> seriously, no pun intended, was probably a good one, especially the Independence Day inspired dogfight level. The result was, in retrospect, a possibly stronger entry into the series, which would help secure future sequels. <laughs> on the other hand, Nintendo's very next Star Fox game was a GameCube third-person on-foot adventure that was a retrofitted 64DD title by Rare, originally called Dinosaur Planet. So I don't want to give Nintendo too much credit for trying to protect the longevity of their intellectual property. Well, thanks for nothing. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be standing here at all. Ultimately, was Nintendo's decision to not release a good, already finished game the right one? Regardless, they've taken the extraordinary step of making it publicly available over two decades later, albeit as yet another way to sell hardware gimmicks. Huh. That's super weird. Developing an entirely new game for a new console in less than a year. Either Nintendo EAD employs miracle workers, or... Nah, I'm sure it's nothing. Thank you for watching this first episode of Keep Play. I mean, Future Retro. If you missed your chance to get a Super NES Classic, fear not! Star Fox 2 and many of these games are available on Nintendo Switch Online. For as long as that's a thing, the game is exactly the same. We have lots more games to talk about, both new and old. Not that there's much difference in the long march of time. But before this video gets too old, please subscribe and click on the bell so that you don't miss an update. And remember, everything becomes retro eventually. Do a barrel roll! Babacom Dojo. Okay, so impossible defense against an invading force no one thought was coming, multiple branching paths to the ending where none of the decisions you made actually affect the outcome, throwing superheroes and kind of saving the day. Oh my god, I know what this game reminds me of. You guys, Star Fox 2 was just way ahead of its time. Not only if it had a romantic subplot. Oh man, this makes so much sense. Anyway, check out our Mass Effect 2 romance video series. It's pretty great. Feeling.